Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Twit Specials is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is a Twit Live special number 199, an introduction to LastPass. Hi, I'm Leo Laporte, and I thought it'd be kind of a good thing, given all the attention to Heartbleed and the need for people to change their passwords, to talk about the use of a password vault, uh, how you set it up, how you use it, why it's a good idea. And uh, because I recommend strongly, and Steve Gibson uh, from Security Now recommends strongly that we use LastPass, I'm going to show you how to do it with LastPass. There are other choices out there, but LastPass has all the features I'm looking for. It's completely cross-platform, and it is truly trust no one, and that's what you're looking for. Not even employees of LastPass or the federal government can see what you've stored in there. But it's always available. It helps you generate long, secure passwords. It makes it really a much easier uh, to use the Internet securely. So... Uh, let's start by installing LastPass on my system. LastPass is free, although they have a premium version that gives you some additional features for a buck a month. Um, you'll choose the download, and it recommends it for you. That's right for your machine. In this case, I'm going to use the LastPass Universal Mac OS X installer. That installs uh, a LastPass extension into all my browsers, including Safari, Chrome, and Firefox. Um, it's a fairly small download. And when I first install it, and this actually confused, we had somebody email me a little bit confused because when he first installed LastPass, uh, even though he already had an account, it said create an account. You don't have to create an account, obviously, <laughs> uh, if you already have an account. So I'm going to run the LastPass installer. And here it says, do you already have an account? I'm going to say I do not have one. Create one for me. You can create create an account on the website. You don't have to do it in the software. So if you already have an account, say no. Now here's the key on LastPass. Create a strong password for LastPass because that's the keys to the kingdom, isn't it? Um, you could use just a completely random thing. What I like to do is use a mnemonic to generate LastPass. So I'm going to use a passage from a book that I love. And I'm going to use that first sentence to generate my password. So I'm going to use, it was the best of times, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. That's 12 characters, that's pretty good. And I'm going to add a few characters as punctuation. I'm going to uh, make all of the nouns, let's see, how should I do this? I could just do it, well, you can't see it. Here, we'll type it here. It was the best of times comma it was th the worst of times and you might want to add a little some something called steve calls padding um maybe a zip code that uh, that you remember from your childhood 95060 your childhood phone number so now we have a th uh, a a uh, 21 character password uh, or 20 character password that is pretty good. I might, I've got punctuation, I've got numbers. I might make some things uppercase and lowercase. So you could start with a capital I um, or you could replace, you know, you could do the lead speak and replace the I with a one. But the point is that you can recreate this. I'm just going to, I'm just going to make it simple. This is still a pretty good password. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times, and then my childhood phone number, all right? The reason that you use a mnemonic for this is you want a strong password, but you want to be able to remember it, and you want to be able to type it. So uh, I think this is a good, this is a good uh, way to do that, is with a mnemonic. And let's see, because I'm going to now, without looking, I'm going to try to do it. It was the best of times, comma, it was was the worst of times uh, 4269458. And by the way, they're giving me a password indicator. See that blue there that uh, shows that the strength is good. You'll watch as I increase the length of the password, it gets better. It 
was the best of times, comma, it was the worst of times, 4269458. And then I'm going to say here, as my hint, let's not say Dickens, let's not say Tale of Two Cities, let's say uh, something that will, will trigger it. How about Paris and Berlin? That's two cities. Maybe that'll be a good enough thing for me to remember it. So now I'm creating a LastPass account with a good, strong password. I am going to also, by the way, later on, and I'll show you how I do this, turn on second factor authentication. Uh, because that will make it even better. So now it's installing the browser extensions on all three uh, browsers. Yeah, you know, if I'd said Deccans, you know, what you don't want is, because sometimes the password hit is not, in this case, it's stored encrypted. But uh, some sites, the password hit is not stored encrypted. And so you don't want the pass say something like, password equals it was the best of time. You don't want to give the hint, give the hacker any information. But if I say Paris and Berlin, I will get, st oh, yeah, two cities, Taylor, two cities, yeah, yeah. So now we've installed the uh, the binary extension. This is called the binary version of LastPass, which you want to use if you can. And then, uh, so what it's going to do, now I'm in Chrome, and it says, do you want to install that extension? Yes. Then it's going to launch Safari, and it's going to do the same thing and install that extension. So now I have the extension installed. I am not going to set Chrome as the goal. Okay. So now... Um, I'll show, and the reason I'm doing this is so I can show you what it looks like on both Chrome and uh, Safari. So this is a Chrome extension that's installing right now. And you'll see it shows up in the extensions. That's that little button there up in the upper right-hand corner. It's blackened right now. I'm going to close Chrome uh, and show it to you on Safari. It's blackened right now because I'm not logged in. But let's, let's do this in Safari. And I'm going to eject that installer. We don't need that anymore. And go to Safari. Safari will also have uh, the LastPass extension. In this case, it's grayed out. It's right up here. I'm going to click that, and it's going to say, all right, I want you to log in the LastPass. Uh, remember the password. Uh, I mean, the uh, email I used was Laporte plus LastPass. That's using a little feature of Gmail that's kind of nice. Anything after the, anything after the plus sign, including the plus sign, is ignored. So you can use, you can create, in effect, a separate address that will show up, and I'll know where that email came from. Are you ready? Here we go. It was the best of times, comma. It was the worst of times. Probably not so good because of the repetition. And then 4269458, but good enough. Now, uh, you notice it can remember the email. For best security, you'd uncheck both of these, right? People might be tempted to say, remember the password. And if your system's very secure, I suppose you can. If you've got, and this is why you want a good mnemonic for the password. If you've got a good mnemonic that you can quickly type, as I can, don't remember the password. That's a, it's, the less you have in there, the better. So here's my last. So once you're logged in, last pass, the menu on Safari, and this is somewhat the same on uh, Chrome, will have these items. Um... And you can also log off. Your vault is where your passwords are stored. So let me click that link. And you'll see, I, of course, I have an empty vault because uh, I haven't added any passwords. But let's, uh, let's go to a site and um, log in and see if it remembers my password. So I'm going to go to Instagram. This is a password I haven't changed yet. And I'm going to click log in. Remember, LastPass is running. In fact, you know it's running because you'll see this little asterisk in the window. Now, one thing that is the case, unfortunately, is different websites and you might use different form techniques and so forth. So this is one thing that throws people with LastPass. Is sometimes it's inconsistent in how it presents itself. You may not always see the asterisk, for instance. But typically, you'll see the asterisk. Now, this is the first time, so it doesn't know any passwords of mine. So I'm going to log in manually on this one and log in. I'm logged into Instagram. But LastPass, noting that I've logged into this site, now has 
or should have that password. If I go to my vault, oops, uh, maybe it didn't. I guess it didn't. Uh, so let's log out. No, it didn't. So I'm going to have to, normally it will do this automatically. By the way, another thing you'll want to do is turn off password memorization in the browsers. Don't trust the browsers to remember passwords. We want only one place where passwords are remembered. We want them remembered in LastPass and nowhere else. So turn off your autofill passwords, as I have here. That's the default. So let's do this again. Um, normally, on many sites, LastPass, and this is what I was talking about, it's not always consistent, will pop up a blue bar saying, do you want me to save this site? That should have happened. It didn't. But that's okay because I can also click this box and say save site. Another feature, and I would use it, is the ability to generate a password. And uh, this, this is all on this pop-up when I click this star here. You can also get these from the LastPass uh, tool on the toolbar. So here's some suggestions. This is the default options. I'm going to make the password longer, 20 characters. Let's go into the advanced options here. Um, upper and lower case A through Z, numbers. We could set a minimum digit count. That's mostly because some sites require a minimum of one digit. Some, all of these are configurable. Some sites will not let you use special characters. I always hate that. But if you can, you want to use special characters. Here's one uh, I do check, and it, may, it does reduce the randomness of your password slightly. It won't use one lowercase l, uppercase l, zero, or o, knowing that those are somewhat ambiguous if you're looking at it. And I always check that. It does take a few possibilities out, but if we have a long enough password, it's not going to change the strength of the password. So now I'm going to press generate, and it's going to use those rules and generate a new password. This is a heck of a good password. Carrot C, carrot dollar sign, V, capital R. You can see. What a great password. That's a password I would not be able to remember. Notice it's giving me the strength here. It goes all the way up to green. This is a good password. You can see previously generated passwords in this dropdown. And if you don't like that password, you can generate another one and another one and another one. All randomly generated, all very strong. There is another um, choice some people like. This does reduce the strength. There's a checkbox, Make Pronounceable. I don't use that, but I guess if you were going to memorize your passwords, you might want to. So now I generate it, and you see this is, yeah, okay, it's pronounceable, <laughs> sort of. Uh, it's all lowercase letters. I, I don't use that. And unless you're using shorter passwords, it's not really useful. I, if you had an eight-character make pronounceable, then you could remember it, an it cell, or an int cell, I guess it is. But it's not a very good password. So let's keep the password length long, as long as your bank or your, your site will let you, and let's not make it pronounceable. And we're going to get a really hairball password. That's a great password. All right, so that's how you generate passwords in LastPass. And once you do that, it'll remember it. In this case, I'm on a site that I already have a password for, and I'm going to save the site. And it's Instagram. You can put it in a group. So if you want to say, you know, social media sites or whatever, uh, it remembers both the username and the login. So now that I've saved that site, if I go to my LastPass vault, you'll see I'll finally have an entry in there, Instagram. I can edit this entry and see more about it. For instance, I can make it a favorite. Instagram has kind of folders within the uh, vault one of which is favorites. Those show up at the top. You have recently used, no group, groups, and favorites. So if I edit Instagram, I can check, check the favorite box. Sometimes you don't want it to autofill, like when you go to a site. So you can disable that. If you really want to be secure, you can say, every time it fills in a password for some sites, ask me for my last pass password. And auto login, sometimes people like it that it will in effect, hit enter after it enters the password. I leave that turned off. 
but I am going to put it in my favorite group. So now I have a group of favorites, and Instagram shows up right there. You'll see I can also, if I wish, I can view the password, although by default it's dots. Um, Instagram will also, I'm sorry, <laughs> last pass. Oh, let's go back to Instagram and, and see how this works. So Instagram.com, I'm going to press the login button, and it fills it in. You can disable that if you wish, but uh, usually that's what I want, and then press login. If there are, is more than one password for a site, maybe you have multiple accounts, it'll show up here. You click that asterisk, but you see it has a little number one that's saying there's one, I do know one password for this site. Is this the one you want? You click it, and it'll fill it in, and then you press login, and you go right to Instagram. So that's a feature you can use or not. Let me show you a few more features. That's basically how you use LastPass right there in a nutshell. Now, the nice thing is this, this uh, account, this Instagram account and password is stored on, Inst on LastPass's site in an encrypted form that they can't read. Only you can read with your password. Uh, they salt your passwords. They do all sorts of really interesting things. In fact, I'm going to show you a setting that it's a good idea to make it even more secure. If you put LastPass on, if I put it on my Android phone right now and I logged in, Instagram password would be there. All my passwords would be there as well. And in fact, there's a feature now on Android that will auto do the autofill. Generally on smartphones, you have to copy and paste. So you'll, you'll try to log into Instagram. You'll say, I don't remember the password. You'll open LastPass, copy the password, paste it in. Uh, let me show you a couple of the things on settings that you're going to be wanting to mess with a little bit. This is the um, default settings. Oh, you know what? This is good. They've changed the default. This increase iterations here on the PBKDF2. This is something Steve and I talked about on Security Now. This makes it harder to brute force passwords if it's a big number. And the, the default is now the recommended number. What didn't used to be 5,000 iterations means... Each time it assaults, it, it, it iterates the hash each time 5,000 times. That would slow down somebody who was using rainbow tables or so forth. Um, you can mess with these other settings. You can see they don't matter much. It says Afrikaans is my native language. I think we'll change that to English. Um, my time zone is wrong. But as you see, it all worked without messing with this stuff. But um, You can create a bookmarklet. If you wish, I don't use that. I like the plugin uh, on the browsers. This is a nice feature. Only allow login from selected countries. This is an additional protection. Uh, I'm going to say only if I log in from the U.S. So that means no hacker can from Norway, those Norwegian hackers are notorious, can use, can attempt to log in a LastPass. I can disallow logins from Tor, again, to prevent people from kind of anonymously trying to hack my LastPass. Keep track of login and form fill. Kill other sessions on login. That's a little tricksy. Uh, that means once I'm using LastPass here, it won't work on my phone. Um, remove duplicate sites from your account is very nice. Uh, after you use LastPass for a while, you may find you have duplications. Uh, going into security here, there are various settings for security. I actually have it on a custom level. Um, but you'll see there's finger, ability to do fingerprint or card reader authentication, when it should prompt for a LastPass password. Um, these, this is just a default uh, uh, directory of similar names like YouTube.com, Google.com, and Gmail.com. You don't usually have to play with that. Never URLs. You might say, I don't ever want to use LastPass on this URL. After a while, as you use sites, you can add to this by uh, when you go to a site, it says, do you, you know, do you want me to remember this site? You can say never, but I don't usually mess with this. This is one you will want to mess with. Strongly suggest you turn on multi-factor authentication. Remember, you have your LastPass password. It's a good password, but let's make it even harder. Let's require the first time you log in on a new machine, uh, a second factor. I use Google Authenticator. It does support YubiKey. That's a physical dongle you'd have to get. Google Authenticator is very simple. You'll get a barcode, which you'll use Google to add the add LastPass to your Google Authenticator. The Authenticator, and I use it all the time, and I'll show you my Authenticator, is constantly generating every 30 seconds a new six-digit code. And that six-digit code is necessary to log into uh, LastPass. 
Um, so here's my authenticator. I don't know if you have an over-the-shoulder or not, Anthony. But I see that my last pass, you know, six-digit code here is is this. That'll be good. Whoops, where is that? Where is that? It's right there. Okay. Um, so to add, Authenticator uh, is a really great thing. It's on iPhone and Android. There is an Authenticator on Windows Phone, not from Google. To set up a new account, you scan a, you can scan a barcode or enter the magic code. Let's say scan a barcode. And now I'll just point that at that barcode on the LastPass screen, and it would add very quickly and simply LastPass to Authenticator so that I could use Authenticator as my second factor authentication. Strongly suggest you do that. In fact, I would do it with Google and everything else. Um, they also support some other systems. I've used Duo Security. That's kind of an interesting thing. You have an app on your phone, and you'll get a request on your phone to authenticate. But the point of this is that it isn't, it's not sufficient just to have your password. They'd also have to, when they log in for the first time on a new machine, they'd also have to want to have one of these second factors. This is another great thing. When I install LastPass on my phone and I turn this on, um, I, it will, the first time I log into LastPass on my phone, it will add a unique identifier to that phone to this list. And it will say disabled. That means when I first use LastPass and try to log in on a new phone, it'll say you have to auth authorize this device in LastPass. And so you go to your LastPass settings, you log in your LastPass on another system, you go to your settings and say, yes, I'm going to allow this device. That keeps, again, it's a further form of security. People can't use your LastPass on their phone unless you've authentic allowed it. You can do the same with computers. You could say, this is a trusted computer. I don't need authentication. That's for multi-factor only. You always will need your password. So there, you don't have to do any of this stuff, but I suggest you do. It's multi-factor really adds a lot with LastPass. Um, LastPass also has the ability to add secure notes, and I use this all feature all the time. Um, can you go to the full screen on that? Yeah. Um, for instance, um, I will actually store my Google Authenticator QR code in LastPass. I trust LastPass. Um, I store social security numbers in LastPass, uh, things like that. Um, you can store credit card numbers here, but LastPass has a credit card fill feature, a form fill feature that I use for that. The form fill uh, is designed to add a credit card. Uh, you can give the credit card a name, the name of the card, the account number, all the information that you would need to use that credit card. And then you can have LastPass autofill those credit cards on accounts that need credit cards. Again, that really saves time. Uh, and these are all, these, these are all highly secured, encrypted in LastPass. It's very effective. If you do enter a credit card, LastPass does have some credit card monitoring. I think this is, it's really a way of uh, raising revenue. They'll let you know if there's credit card issues. Um, LastPass also has a security audit, and this is a really handy feature. The LastPass tools are great. Um, if you go into tools, you'll see I have a security check that I can run. There's a lot of advanced stuff I'm not going into here, like multiple identities and so forth. But the security check will actually go through everything in your LastPass folder and tell you some things about the strength of your passwords. Um, how many... How, so, for instance, my Instagram password's not so good. <laughs> um, this also does a heart bleed check. So Instagram has not updated its cert which means that it is still probably not a good idea. Instagram was bit by Heartbleed to, this is why I haven't changed my Instagram password yet. So their suggestion is, wait, now on my full last pass, in fact, I'll show you that. I'll log into my account and show you. Um, it showed me a number of sites that I should change the password because they were vulnerable to Heartbleed and they had updated the certificate. And then a number of sites where they hadn't patched Heartbleed or they hadn't updated their certificate. And those sites, they say, as they do here, wait to change your Instagram password. So this is another great feature. All of this stuff that I've that I've done right now is free. Um, the premium uh, gives you mobile uh, apps, which is really nice. Uh, but frankly, the free thing is is ninety percent of what you, what you need. So uh, the the premium is a buck a month.
And so I am premium and have been as much because I want to support last passes because uh, I need to do it. So this is a really great uh, password vault. There are many others. There's RoboForm AI. There's one password. There's the open source key pass. LastPass has all the features that I like, including complete cross-platform cap uh, platform capabilities. But more importantly, um, it, it Steve Gibson's vetted it, and their trust no one system means that no one, not even LastPass, has access to your passwords. You and you alone have access to it. Um, there is an offline mode. You can take your vault with you. You can export it. Somebody in the chat room is reminding me of that. You can say, I want to work offline, which means it downloads your vault and keeps it on the system. There's a lot of nice features. But those are the basic features. So every time I go to somewhere and uh, create a new account, um, let's go to if this, then that. Oh, actually, I changed the password there, so I don't know the password. Uh, let's see. It has to be somewhere I know the password for. <laughs> I don't know any of my passwords. That's the beauty of this. Uh, where should I? Well, let's go to Twitter and create a new account. So we're going to create a new account, sign up for Twitter. Uh, I'm going to make this Leo's last pass. And it's going to be Leo, uh, actually Laporte, plus Twitter at gmail.com. And then notice next to the password, there's a little icon that says you can generate a password here. And let's generate a nice, strong, long password. By default, it's, you know, remembers the last settings. I'm going to use that password. That's a good one. And I'm going to save that site. Now I have. Now, by the way, I have multiple Twitter accounts. So I'm going to say this is Twitter Leo's last pass account. And I'm going to save that site. And I'm going to sign up for Twitter. Twitter has second factor, which I would strongly... By the way, Twitter noted the password is perfect. <laughs> There's my username. So when you create a new account, use LastPass to generate and remember that password. And if you asked me right now, what's my uh, Twitter password on this account? I'd have no idea. I saw it briefly, but it's so long and so obscure that I don't remember it. I don't remember any of my passwords. They're always unique. Each site's unique. And they're all remembered by LastPass. And you, I absolutely feel you can trust LastPass. Uh, I have for many years now. So there is a little um, little kind of tutorial. I think that's the basics that you need to know on using LastPass. Strongly encourage you to do that. Um, it, it, it's a little bit of trouble. But actually, once you set it up, you'll find it's much easier to create new accounts, much easier to log in. Much easier to fill in credit cards. And i got to warn you, that's become a problem for me because I can buy stuff like that. Because it, I, don't know my, I don't have to pull out my wallet. LastPass has all my credit cards in there. And I can literally go to my LastPass. Let, let me log out here and log into my regular account and show you because that LastPass is actually you know, my active LastPass account. So let's use it uh, on Chrome here. And you see it's one of my extensions, LastPass. Oh, now here's, actually, this is good. So I changed my Google password as part of this Heartbleed. Because I'm using LastPass, and you can see LastPass up here in the, the corner, it's red. Because um, I've set it up that it logs in um, automatically. Uh, I don't have to remember my new Google password. It actually has it, and it filled it in so I can log in. And because this is the first time I've logged into Google with this new password, Google's also doing the second factor. So I'm going to pull up my authenticator and enter in my... Six digit two three eight three five four two three eight three five four. Note I don't really have to uh, hide that six digit because you'd need my full password for it to be good for anything, and it's only good for 30 seconds anyway. Plus, you can't reverse engineer it. Now, I'm on a Google account, so notice that I have 15 matching sites in LastPass. That's because I have so many Google accounts memorized in LastPass, and these are all of them, including the YouTube account. So this is this way I don't have to remember any of these individual passwords. They're all there. I'll also show you in my form fills, I have multiple credit cards. So all the credit card information is in here, and I can just have it fill that in when I'm on a site that requires credit card information. Almost always this works. You'll see when I highlight over something, I also get a wrench. That gives me things I can do. 
it's more useful on a password account. So let me uh, let me go to this. Um, this will give me things I can do. I can autofill, edit, copy into the clipboard the username or the password. So if the autofill is not working, I can do it manually. Copy the URL. Notice uh, when I go to my LastPass vault, I have a ton of sites in here. These are the favorites, the ones I use the most often, but I also have secure notes, a ton of them. These are all things stored in LastPass um, because I trust it. So it's really become my vault for anything that I don't want anybody to see. LastPass keeps tracks of when you last used a password. So you'll see over here in the second column, last touch. That's the last time these passwords were touched. That means the last time I logged into these sites. Because these are my favorites, all of them are fairly recent. Um, and you can delete. You can delete anything you don't want. Can I sign into Amazon without showing my account numbers? Sure. You mean, can I buy something? <laughs> no, it'll show my account numbers. It's a nice try, but I'm not going to do that. All right. So there you go. There's a kind of a, a probably longer than it needed to be, but, but a little walk through how you use LastPass and how it works. Um, and it does have all my credit card numbers in there. But again, LastPass is trust no one. So I can safely, with confidence, put my credit card numbers in there because even employees of LastPass, even the federal government, cannot get anything in your LastPass vault. Only you can get it.